Hey, 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 everybody. It is Bible study time here on Sunday night. Thanks for being here tonight. I'm doing some things, getting some things going. I'm a couple minutes late. We're getting the kids to bed, so I'm a couple minutes late, but that's okay. Uh, I'm just going through some things. We'll get a couple minutes, let some people come in to the, uh, to the video, and uh, we'll get going. Let's see. All right. Good to see everybody. Sapphire, good to see you. Denise, good to see you. Prayer request, praise report time. Well, I'm not. I was. I was late. So, I was late. I was the one that was late. I've been putting the kids to bed. Good to see everybody. Take my glasses off so I can see. Pretty bad, ain't it? Uh... Prayer requests and praise reports. I'm working on it. Wendy, good to see you. Denise, good to see you. Sapphire, good to see you. I've said it before, I know. I'm going to say it again. It's okay to say it more than once. Prayer requests and praise reports. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if you're typing. If you are, I will let you type. How are things going? How was your Mother's Day? Happy Mother's Day to you, Denise. Um, God bless you. I know. I don't know if you saw Jacob today or not, but uh, happy Mother's Day. I still had 45 minutes because I started washing last year. Oh, yeah, no, not 45 minutes. Sorry. Seven. I said 7:15 Central Time in the video. <laughs> so it's it's uh. I was late. I was late. It says uh, 720. I was 717. Um, yeah, I did. Hey, Bobby, good to see you. Mother's Day lunch with my boy. Hey, that's cool. I had Mother's Day lunch with uh, my kids, and I, I guess, and Amy. We had, uh, I had, I was running late. I had to bring somebody home from church. But we had, uh, Chicken strips and tater tots for lunch. Mm -hmm -hmm. Good stuff. Um, the prayer request, Sapphire, I believe I wrote it down. I did write it down. I don't remember. It was last Thursday. Um, it was... Let me see if I can find it. Uh, um... job. Last thing I have was the 21st. I know I wrote down other stuff too. I don't know. I don't remember. I know I wrote it down, but I don't remember what it was because I'm weird like that. But uh, anyway, God is good. Go ahead and refresh my memory if you can. I would appreciate that um, for that prayer request. Uh, Denise, um, how are things going with your situation? Um, you don't have to comment on anything uh, major as far as like uh, anything like that. Just um, thing, just you know, something like things are okay or things need prayer or whatever. Um, let me know. Um, today's church service is up on YouTube and Facebook. If you want to watch that, it is up on YouTube and Facebook. I did it today. Um, yeah, I, I did see that Piatone, the working at cases in Piatone. I did, I did remember you saying that. So that is a praise report for Sapphire. She got a new job right there in Piatone where she's at. So praise the Lord for that kitchen, working in the kitchen. Good job. Good job. And it'll be a lot easier on your body as well. Hi Cindy, good to see you. Still need prayer to listen to my pastor and do what I need to do. Well, I gotta talk to you, this pastor that you're talking to, you know, because this guy needs to get his act together. Really does. Gosh. Anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess your my I guess your pastor's awesome. Is that what you're saying? Because I I need to meet this guy if he's so awesome. But anyway, um, yeah, 
we had a, we had a good day. We had uh, pretty good um, pretty good turnout today. Uh, we had some family there of of people. Um, one thing that I did, and I don't, if you want to see it, it's there on YouTube already. But we talked about uh, in First Samuel uh, chapter one, uh, Hannah. And Denise, I think you were there for most of it. Um, so you know kind of where I'm going with this. We're not going to do that tonight because it's already up. You can watch it. Um, we're going to continue in Galatians. But uh, uh, let's go ahead and, and think about that. Think about the Galatian church tonight. Uh, so... Anyway, yes, you were there. I saw your picture on the thing anyway. So, um, God is good. We know that. And uh, his, his mercies endure every single day. And they're fresh every morning. We know that. And He is a good God. Uh, some prayer requests from church today. Um, continue to pray for little Levi Cross. Tumor is out. He's doing well, um, and uh, hey, doing well in his chemo. Um, so he's doing well. Uh, mom, to a baby that isn't it? Yeah, I, I remember that sapphire. So I, I, um, I understand that kind of pain that is there. That you're a. Uh, I'd forgot that you had said you had miscarried a child um so but but god is god is good and you've seen that you've actually seen that in your life and and you know that's greater than anything i can ever tell you <laughs> you know is to see god move for yourself and that, and that's that's a that's greater than any pastor could tell you that you know you know i you know i could sit there and say you know god is good god is greater than your situation or, or, or you know, God, God can bless you. Um, that's just me saying it. But for you to witness it in your own life is much more has much more impact than me saying that God can minister to you because you've actually seen it and you've actually felt it. So it's it's a uh, it's good that um, God has been moving in your life, even though you've had much much that you've went through, and um, uh, God is good. And you know. One of the things that I want you to do, want, we should all do, actually, but what I want us to all do, you know, myself included, um, Denise and Sapphire and Christine and everybody that's involved tonight, um, just take a moment and reflect on the goodness of God in your life. Because if you take a moment and reflect upon that, then that that is way more um, way more has way more impact on your life. Uh, so yeah, so you know, um, God is good. I'm I'm reading comments as well as I, as I'm talking, so that's why I'm pausing and and stuff. So so that's that's one thing I've learned in my life is that if I would just sit back and reflect on what God has done in my life through everything I've been through everything I've been through um, if I would just sit back and reflect and see what God has brought me through that would get me through the next day or the next week or the next month or the next year because in spite of everything God is still good and God is still wanting me to succeed in him. And how can you say that, Pastor Josh? Well, look up these two scriptures, Romans 8:28 and Jeremiah 29:11. And if you're a student of the scripture, you know what those are. Okay, but if you need refreshment, look those up. Romans 8:28 and Jeremiah 29:11. God's plan is for you to prosper. Now, Maybe it won't be in finances. Maybe it won't be in, in material things. But prospering is much more than that. Prospering is growth in God, growth in His in His Word, 
growth in relationships with God and with God's people is also prospering. Okay? So when we think of prospering, we should be thinking about what God is doing through us with other people more than God giving us a lot of stuff. Because God, God can give us anything we want, but God is also going to um, give us what we need. Okay? So, that being said, I'm rambling, but is there any prayer requests and praise reports that we would like to share? We said little Levi, uh, baby Carter, also. Um, it was so cute. I wish I was would be able to take my phone and just record our prayer time as a family because it's so precious. Um, Justin prayed tonight, and it was so precious to listen to him pray for things that we normally pray for, but that it actually, um, he remembers and it impacts him. And it, it, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing to see that uh, he is doing those things. Uh, Claudia, good to see you tonight. Um, prayer request and praise reports. Uh, this is what we're doing right now. Do you have anything you'd like to share that you don't mind being in the comment section under this video? That's one thing. If you want me to pray for something or want us to pray for something that you don't want in this stream of comments, you can instant message me and we can we can do that that way. Okay? Todd, good to see you tonight. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Yes. So, Baby Carter and Levi. Um, you know, one thing that I'm going to do tonight that I don't normally do, um, my dog is having some issues. Um, he needs prayer. I don't know what's going on with him. Um, he's better than he was yesterday. But he's having trouble walking. Um, his his hinder, hinder, hinder quarters on the right side, his right back leg and hip, uh, he has difficulty with... Um, if he's on pain medication, he kind of limps, but he doesn't whimper. So that's good. I don't know what it was, um, but uh, he needs prayer. And uh, I've been praying for him. God touch him. He's 12 years old. He's a... He's a, he's a you know, he's getting up there, but it's hard to it's hard to say goodbye to a to a dog. I'm not ready to do that. I'm not ready to do that. I think he I, I think he can live for at least a couple more years. Um, but I've been I've been praying for him, and so pray for him with me um, tonight. His name is Ace. He's a good dog. He's a family dog. The kids love him, and we love him. And um, it'd be devastating to the boys should we have to make a decision about quality of life. So, um, just pray that God touches him and, and raises him up. Um, so, okay. Uh, Christine says that Tim and her have a praise report. We got a call for a two-bedroom apartment. That's what we have been praying for. Thank you, Lord, for that. Praise report. Two-bedroom apartment for Christine and Tim. Christine and Tim are my cousins. For those of you who don't know, know them, they're my Tim is my cousin on my mom's side, and Christine is his wife. And they're great people, great great people in the Lord. Love them, to love them. Uh, they're 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 good people. And uh, Christine, you're watching, and so I can gush on you a little bit. Um, but uh, we'll be praising God for that apartment that you that you got, two bedroom apartment. Praise God for that. Um, anything else? Um, anything else? Uh, that's all I had from church today. Um, anything else from you guys? We're going to be going, continuing through the book of Galatians tonight. Um, and, uh, going through that, the last part of chapter 5, um, about spiritual fruit and fleshly, fleshly works. We'll be doing that. Um, 
it is 7.33. I was late, so that's okay. Um, but anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait a couple more seconds. Anybody doesn't have anything else, we'll go ahead and pray. Um, so praise report for Sapphire and for Christine. Um, I don't know about Dustin's friend. I haven't heard about that this week. I um, didn't. I didn't ask. I suppose I should have, but I didn't. I. Um, I was trying to remember everything that was going on today. <laughs> we had. We had a. We had a special. It wasn't a special service, but it was Mother's Day service. So we had to remember to give out the little the little gifts for the mothers. We had to remember to do communion. We had to. I had to remember to. And all of it was kind of running together, and so excuse me, and so I forgot to ask, but um, I will ask. Maybe I'll maybe I'll message Brenda tomorrow or and find out how things are going there because I'm sure they keep in contact pretty well with that situation. Um, pray for Brittany and Philip. Um, it's the one I forgot to mention. Uh, just need just need touch. Uh, a touch from God, you know. Um, Brittany and Philip, they uh, go to our church um, sporadically, but I've known them for years, for about three years, and uh, our kids are friends, and so, you know, they're 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 good people, um, and they just need prayer. So let's pray for them. Brittany and Philip. Uh, Levi, Baby Carter, and Ace, my dog, um, and of course, uh, her name was, where did the paper go, her name was, the girl's name uh, from last week was Shelby, pray for Shelby um, as well, we don't know, I haven't heard, so we might as well keep praying for Shelby, okay, so uh, let's do that, um, so, praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. He is good. He's good. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for all the things you've done for us and all the things that you've given to us and blessed us with. Lord, you give us so much that, Lord, we um, don't realize. And if we would sit back and just reflect on our life, we would see that you do so much, Lord. You you give us so much and you minister to us by your Spirit. And Lord, we just thank you that, Lord, Sapphire has this job with Casey's. We thank you that, Lord, that you uh, uh, pro provided this job for her. Lord, I just pray that you'd give her the ability to do the job. And, and uh, I know she can. But Lord, give her the desire to keep working in this job and, and, and ministering in that way. Thank you that it's close to home and that it's not too much of a traveling thing. I just pray that you'd bless her and minister to her in this job and give her favor with her bosses and just be with her by your spirit. Father, I also ask that um, you'd also be with uh, 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 Christine and Tim, Lord, in this uh, new apartment. Father, I pray that you would continue to minister to them and, Lord, that you would uh, give them uh, the help they need to move and that they would uh, be able to get swiftly in the new apartment and uh, things would go well. Touch Tim in his leg and help him to uh, um, continue to recover from the stroke and that uh, things would, would continually get better for him. Father, I pray that you'd bless, his, bless him and minister to him in his body and in his heart and in his spirit. And bless he and Christine in so many ways, Lord. And we thank you for that. We give you praise. Lord, we also ask that you'd be with Levi, Lord, that this that you would continue to touch him as, Lord, he's going through chemo. Pray that you'd bless him by your spirit. Be also with Baby Carter. Lord, touch um, Baby Carter as well. I don't know the full situation, Lord, but I know you do. And, Father, I pray that your spirit would be around about him as well. Father, I pray that you would also be with uh, Shelby. Touch her and bless her, Lord. Help her to know she's loved and she's important. And, Lord, that you are the only answer for the things that are are, are hurting her or, or, or 
nagging against her, Father. You're the only answer, Father. I pray that you would touch her and bless her by your Spirit. Father, I also ask that you would be with Brittany and Philip. Lord, just uh, give them uh, the wherewithal to know that they cannot do things, do this by themselves. They need you. Father, bless them by your Spirit and give them, Lord, the knowledge of your presence in their home, the knowledge of your presence in their lives. And Lord, we thank you for that. And Lord, I pray for my dog, and, and I know I've been praying for him a lot. Lord, I just pray that you would touch his leg and touch his uh, hip, and Lord, and the muscles there. and Just, Lord, just bring it to the place of, of healing and wholeness, that, Lord, he wouldn't have to be in any pain or have to be in any uh, problems there, that he would have somewhat of a good quality of life the last uh, years of his life. Father, I just pray that you would bless him and as well and help him to sleep well tonight and just be with him by your Spirit. And, Lord, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name. And Lord, be with us tonight as we study your word. Help us to uh, glean a greater understanding of it. And Lord, I pray that your spirit be round about us tonight. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good to see you all tonight. Uh, Sapphire, thank you for being an encouragement. Praying for everybody. I hope when we do these prayer requests that uh, you take notes because I do, and that's how we get prayer requests for for these t in, in the evenings, and then I kind of save them from week to week so we can kind of refresh a little bit or praise report kind of things. Um, I, I certainly hope you're taking notes when we do these Bible studies. Uh, you don't have to, but uh, I do, not while I'm doing them, but while I'm studying, and um, it is... It is a great way to grow in the knowledge of God. So, turn with me if you will, or if you don't turn with me, that's okay. We can, you can uh, be a part, because I'm going to read this anyway. Galatians chapter 4, um, starting in verse 16. Um, so, we will uh, get started on that. And when you're there... Um, I'll, I'll wait a couple of moments because I think there's a little bit of a lag in between the live stream and getting to you guys. Um, but we're in Galatians chapter um, 4, 5, excuse me, 5, starting in verse 16. And we're going to go down to the end of the chapter and we're going to study it and we're going to look at it. Okay? So go with me, if you will, to verse 16 of chapter 5 in the book of Galatians. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. That Yeah, that you please. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are revealed, which are these, adultery, sexual immorality, impurity, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, rage, selflessness, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. I warn you, as I previously warned you, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Against there, such things there is no law. Now, uh, lost my place. Okay. Those who are Christ have crucified the flesh and with its passions and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be con conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. Now, think about this for a moment. He is giving a contrast um, to what is... What a, what, a, what a spiritual person is supposed to be, what a, what a person, what a follower of Christ is supposed to be, versus someone who is not. Now, if you look at this, 
He says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. And somebody might say, well, how are we going to walk in the Spirit? What, you know, this is, this is somewhat a Pentecostal doctrine. I mean, it's a doctrine of the Bible, but it's a, it's a Pentecostal, uh, it's in the Pentecostal movement, that's what we say, walk in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. And when you walk in the Spirit, you, um, there are certain things that happen. Uh, you know, there's, uh, in Acts chapter 2, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, in, in the Pentecostal movement, you are encouraged to seek that. And in, and in that, you are to then walk in the Spirit. And you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So how do you walk in the Spirit? How do you, how do you go from, from just being a casual, quote-unquote, Christian who says, I'm a Christian, to someone who actually walks in the Spirit? Well, there, there are things that must take place in a person's life in order for you to walk in the Spirit. Well, uh, and, and these are things that are not new. This isn't, a, this isn't a new revelation of things, okay? This is something that, that must occur in a person's life. Your relationship with God must be fervent. It must be fervent. Fervent is good, flippant is bad. You must be fervent in a relationship with God. How do you become fervent in a relationship with God? One of the things that you do and that you can do is allow God to work in your life through His Word and through a time of prayer. And now that that would suggest that we then must uh, spend that time. And sometimes it's hard to do that for some people for various reasons. For various reasons, sometimes it's a, it's an agenda thing. Sometimes, well, I I can't because of my agenda. You know, I have I have so many things to do. Well, one of the things that I used to do, and I, I still do from time to time, but I used to do because I I used to drive you know to Gilman every day, and it's a it's a twenty five mile drive, twenty six miles or something like that. And what I would do is I would take that time to pray. I didn't have an opportunity to listen to my Bible like I do now on my phone, but I would take that time to pray. And a lot of times when I was doing my job in Gilman, I was by myself. Early mornings, I was by myself. So then I would use that time to pray. Or I would listen to sermons on the radio and then and, and take that time to pray. Uh, a fervent relationship must must be cultivated with God. It must to walk in the Spirit. How, how are we going to know the will of God if we don't? And the will of God is that we are to have a fervent relationship, a fervent dependent relationship upon God. We're to depend upon God. We talked last week and I was reviewing last week's message or last week's study. We were reviewing that. I was reviewing that and I, and I realized that I had mentioned something about things that aren't true that people say or things that are not scriptural that people say and one of those things is God helps those who help themselves and that's not true that is not true that is not scriptural that is not that's that's not spiritual that's not anything that's just untruth God is not about us being independent from him God is about us being dependent upon him in every single aspect of our life God is the God is all about us being dependent upon Him. My children are dependent upon me and my wife. And I'm their father. So God is our heavenly father. Therefore, I must be dependent upon God for my every need. That's what God wants. God doesn't say at all anywhere that we're to be independent from Him. We're to be dependent upon Him. And that's one of the things that we must understand when we want to be able to walk in the Spirit is that God desires for us to have a fervent relationship. One that says, I'm going to take the time that I need to do and read my Bible, prayerfully consider my Bible, prayerfully consider my words that I'm reading, and, and that can come in many forms. 
for me, I read and I underline or highlight things that God pulls out of Scripture for me. So I, I do those things. But for someone else, it might be different. But God wants us to know, that, must understand that to walk in the Spirit, we must have a fervent relationship with God. And, and, and that means that we spend time with Him in His Word. We grow in grace and knowledge of God through His Word, through a time of prayer. Where See, see reading His Word, we are putting into ourselves the words of God. We are, we are giving God uh, the ability to impart His Word into our heart. That's half, or a third, of the life, okay? The time of prayer is important because we show our dependency upon God when we put our petitions and our praises to God. We show our dependency in, those, in that action. But it's also important for us to shut up. And, I, and, and that's harsh, I know. But it's important for us to shut up and allow God to talk. You know, a conversation, that's what prayer is. You know, we have conversation. One, one thing I hate to do, and I'm going to tell, my, tell on myself, um, I would much rather call someone on the phone than text or instant message. I would, I would. To be honest with you, I would. I cannot stand texting or instant messenger. I know, Denise, we instant message all the time, and I get it, okay? I don't like it, but I do it, Okay? I'd rather talk on the phone, and I know that's not possible in every situation. But just being transparent here, and see when we go through this uh, this whole situation of of being fervent in relationship with God, we have to shut our mouth and allow God to talk. You know, because we can say, "God, I need this," and "God, I need that." Thank you for what you've done. God, I need you know, touch this, touch that. But the, sometimes with the things that we go through, God is trying to get our attention and say, oh, by the way, by the way, here's what you need to change. And if we never shut up, we would never know that. You see? Because, we, because God is not going to bust in and tell you to stop talking so he can talk. He's going to use people like me to tell you to shut up so he can talk. Okay? But understand that it's a two-way conversation. It's a two-way conversation between you and God. And when you have a when you walk in the spirit, that you're you walking in the spirit is is not spiritual. Okay? It's not a spiritual thing. It's not your heads are in your heads in the clouds and you're just ah, oh, that's not what that is. Walking in the spirit is someone who is constantly expectant for God to do something and continually is seeking for God to do something and being open for God to move. That's what being walking in the Spirit is or, or walking in the Spirit of God. That's what that is. That's not, it's not anything about being hyper-spiritual and saying, well, you know, walking around with your head in the clouds. That's not what it is. It's being available for God to use you to minister to someone else and being able to do it. That's what walking in the Spirit is. I, I used this uh, this morning. I don't know who I was talking to about it. Probably, I don't remember what I was talking about. about it. I, I think it was in Sunday school this morning, the, the end of Sunday school. But I, I used to go to Walmart all the time probably sometimes twice, three times a day. Every, you know, but it was every day. And some of those times it was to buy things, and some of those times it was to window shop, and some of those times it was purely to go to seek out ministry opportunity. And God will give ministry opportunity if you seek it. If, you're, if you want to do it, God will provide that. But you have to be open you know, it's 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 one thing to say, God, use me in this. That's one thing. But then it's totally something different when God wants to use you in that and you're not open to it. You see? You gotta be open to it. You gotta you gotta allow God when God says something to you or is putting something in your path, you've gotta be open to that. You gotta be open to that. You you it, it just makes sense. 
right? It just makes sense. Because if we're saying, God, use us, use me, but then we're not available to be used, then that, that, that is not walking in the Spirit at all. That's, that's walking in our own desires to do whatever we're going to do, okay? And believe me, I've been, I've been in that situation. You know, there, there are times in my day, and I, I tell you, I will tell you, I do enough stuff as it is, okay? And, and if I've got to go to Walmart, and I don't want to go to Walmart, but i got to go to Walmart anyway. Those are the days when I want to get in, get my stuff, and get out. And, but see, those are the days that God can put someone in my path to minister to. And those are also the days that I am more apt to walk away. Because I've got something to do. I've got to be somewhere. i got my own agenda. But see, the person walking in the Spirit recognizes that, oh, God wants me to minister. Even though I don't want to, God wants me to minister to this person. And so therefore, I'm going to have to do it. If I want to be walking in the Spirit, I'm going to have to do that. Because if I'm, not, if I'm going to just shut God down every time God wants to use me in something, then He's not going to use me. But we've got to be walking in the Spirit. Number one, verse 16, he says, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you are seeking after God, you won't be seeking after anything else. Plain and simple. You seek after God, you will not seek after anything else. And we're human, I know. You know, I'm not saying we're not. I'm not saying you should be something you're not. But what I am saying is if you put God first and you put his word first and you put the things of his, uh, his word first, then he will then give you this ability to not seek after the things of the flesh, but seek after the things of God. And the more you seek after the things of God, the easier it will be to turn away from the things of the flesh. And the opposite is also true. Okay, the more God, the more God uh, tells you to, to follow after Him, and you follow after Him, it is easy to do that after a while. It becomes something that you're accustomed to. But the opposite is true. You could be accustomed to following God, and you could begin to say, "Well, God told God wants me to follow, but I'm going to go do my own thing," and you do your own thing. After a while, doing your own thing becomes a lot easier than doing what God wants you to do. And then you begin no longer walking in the flesh, or walking in the Spirit, but walking in the flesh. Okay? So, we are to walk in the Spirit as believers, knowing, now now understand, we have to know and understand that we are human, and therefore walking in the flesh is something we always have to fight against. Okay? It's not something that we can just we can just give up and say, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm just going to not do it. Uh, we can do that. We can have that kind of mentality and we can strive for that. But we're human. We're human beings who are, who are uh, um, uh, plagued with this desire to walk in the flesh. Okay? And we have to fight against that. The Bible talks about that. There's warrings in your body and warrings in your spirit between uh, the flesh and the spirit. And it, it talks about that. And, it, and it's a constant thing. But we have to war against the flesh and put down the flesh. Paul said that. He said he had to beat down the old man, beat down the flesh every day. And we have to do that. We have to do that. In order to, to walk in the spirit, we have to be that way. We have to be that way. Okay? Now, it says, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. So there is a war that goes on. The spirit is fighting against the flesh, and the flesh is fighting against the spirit, and it's just a big thing, you know? There's an old Indian proverb, and um, it, it, it pertains to this, but it, it, there was an Indian uh, chief who was talking to a young Indian boy, I believe. That's how it goes. That's how the proverb goes, or how the analogy goes. And um, we're talking about uh, a wolf and a bear 
um, if they were to fight, which one would win? And the ending of the story is the one that would win is the one that you feed. So the, the, the one that you feed is will become stronger than the one you don't feed, and then that would overtake the one, the weaker one in that proverb. And that, and that really um, says a lot about the spirit versus the flesh. If we are going to feed the spirit by spending time with God, reading his word, joining, in, joining into a church that we can call our church home, and uh, joining into uh, Bible study like we're doing tonight, and, and joining in with other believers for encouragement, if we're going to feed our spirit with that, that is going to win out over the flesh. But if we are if we are feeding our flesh, doing what we want, uh, saying what we want, going where we want to go, and nothing really changes, we're feeding the flesh, and therefore it'll choke out your relationship with God. Excuse me. <clears throat> it says there, these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. So they, the spirit and the flesh war against each other continually and constantly. They do. And they do it so that, you know, you're either stronger or you're weaker. Depends on who you feed, okay? Depends on what you, which one you feed. Which one you give more, more, uh, more time to, okay? And I would encourage you to give more time to God and not to... The flesh and it's difficult that is a difficult thing to do for anyone for me for you for anyone when we live in this world and you know we were talking today um, about um, Hannah and one of the things in the story that struck me as I studied it was this very thing Hannah walked in the spirit how do I know Hannah walked in the Spirit? How do I know that she walked in the Spirit? That she was a she was a godly mother that we are to to model ourselves after was because when she was being provoked by Elk by by uh, <clears throat> the other wife, Penea, when she was being provoked by Penea, she did not give in to the the desire to to go back at her. And I know that that is, that is something that we are plagued with every single day. You know what I mean? We are plagued with that every single day. Somebody does us wrong, man, we're going to do it. You know, we're going we're gonna to get back at them. We're going to get back at them. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. You know, I, I, I'm going to say this, but I don't want my kids to be bullied. And my kids were bullied uh, last year. My, my oldest was bullied last year. And I told him, I said, you know what, if somebody hits you, you ball your fist up and you punch them in the face as hard as you can. And I said, and then they won't do it again. They won't do it again. Because I didn't want him to be bullied. He's too good-hearted. He's too good-hearted. He's too good-hearted of a kid. He's too, uh, he's too precious and special and, and he's too uh, uh, creative and all these things to be beat down by someone else. And so I told him, I said, you know what? Somebody does that, you punch them in the face as hard as you can. Because I don't want to be bullied. But that, but that mentality is something that um, that mentality is something that we cultivate in our culture. If somebody is going to do something to me, I'm going to do it back. <clears throat> and Hannah was being was being provoked. She was being made fun of. She was being ridiculed. And she did not do the same thing. She um, just gave it to God and asked God and prayed to God. And that's, that's really what we want. And that's what, you know, Justin was trying to do. <laughs> and I was telling him, punch him as hard as you can in the face. But, you know, and sometimes that's what bullies, you know, bullies, bullies respond to that more than they respond to, oh, you, you know, you're just having a bad day. Okay, no, they respond to, to like action. And so he... He didn't have to do that because I had I I was in contact with the school, but he didn't have to do that. They took the school took care of it under my direction, so that was a good thing. But you know we we tend to do our own thing, 
when we get hurt, boy, don't mess with me, you know. Some people, you know, don't don't mess with them before they have their coffee. Don't talk to them before they have their coffee in the morning. Well, we're not to be like that, are we? I mean, are we really supposed to be like that? I would hope not. I would hope not. But you never know. You never know, right? God, God wouldn't want us to be crabby in the morning. Caffeine is is not is not any substitute for God, right? So, going on here. <clears throat> But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, we've talked about this before, and Paul continues the same theme all the way through Galatians. The law in Paul. Remember, Paul said, I've talked about it before, Paul said in one of his gospels, in one of his epistles, that the law brought out in him covetousness and sin. Okay? Paul said that about himself, about the law. If you live on, in the Spirit, then you're not living under the law. You're living in the Spirit. You're walking in the Spirit. Now, if we walk in the Spirit, the law says, the law said, says things like, um, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. Well, well you know, um, it's the same thing, the same premise as what I've said before, and I always will say it. You take a, a, a plate of cookies and you put them in front of a child. Of course, chocolate chip cookies in front of Justin. Yeah, or, or brownies, okay? He's got my weakness for brownies. But you put, a, you put a plate of brownies in front of him, you say, you cannot eat those, do not eat those. And he's not allowed to do anything but look at those brownies. Pretty soon he's going to eat those brownies. So Paul saying that the law was, was was causing him to sin because it was it was it was providing for him this desire for something that he knew he couldn't have, and that was covetousness. And I can I can tell you this from my own personal experience. I remember when I was asked to fast the first time for something. I don't remember what it was for, but I was asked to fast. And so I tried to fast. And boy, I'll tell you what, I'd never been so hungry in my life. I'd never been so hungry in my life than when I was asked to fast. And I don't I don't think I did it. I don't I don't think I was able to do it. But that temptation was just so strong to eat. Now if I wouldn't have been asked to fast, I would have, you know, I can some sometimes it's my my body is different in that I can eat something large enough during the day that I won't need to eat anything till the morning. But when I'm asked to, to fast, it's like, man, I need to devour everything in the house because I'm so hungry. That's the temptation. That's the that's the um, the the where the covetousness and all that comes in. When you when you walk in the spirit, when you walk in the Lord, those kinds of things can happen, but we have a place to go. We have a we have a, we have a savior who we can go to and say, God help me through this, and He will do so, and He will do so. Now, verse nineteen. We're only on nineteen. If you can believe that. Now the works of the flesh are revealed, which are these. Now these. Now if you now understand. Now let's let's count these. Okay, let's count these. Adultery, sexual immorality. Uh, impurity, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, rage, selfishness, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, carou uh, cur um, carousing, and the like. Thirteen things. I believe that's thirteen. Uh... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, seventeen things. Seventeen things that encompass, and in those seventeen things, they encompass everything that we're tempted by. You understand that? We are, we are tempted every day with adultery. In many, many, many forms. Maybe not sexual adultery. But we put ourselves 
before God. That's adultery, spiritual adultery, sexual immorality. Some people are not are not tempted by that, but some people are, in some way, shape, or form. Impurity in many, many, many forms. Lewdness, yep. Idolatry, absolutely. Um, we can make ourselves an idol. We can make anything an idol. We can make Facebook an idol. We can make anything an idol, right? Sorcery, hatred. Yeah, that's that's a big one. That's a big one. People think it's okay to hate. It's not. Strife, and strife is arguing and jealousy and rage and selfish selfishness, and dissensions. All of these things are the plague of the human. The plague of the human. In the natural state of the sin nature, this is what the human will respond to. But, but, the believer, the one who is walking in the Spirit, is called to something much, much more, and that is to follow the law of God, the, the, the Spirit of God. And he goes on, and he, says, he talks about those... And he says, <clears throat> I warn you, as I previously warned you, and he's been previous, he's been warning them a lot about this, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, he, he warns us in the book of Romans of the same thing. And he warned, he warned in this book, too, once before. Those who do those things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you harbor any of these things in your heart, and we have, to, we have to search ourselves every day. If you harbor any of these things in your heart and you do not repent of them, you will not go to heaven. You will not go to heaven. Plain and simple. If you have something against someone, if you are a, a selfish person, if you like to, 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 to cause strife and dissension and splits and all these things because it just has the, the drama in your life has to be just so and you don't repent of that you will not be in heaven you will not be in heaven I'm sorry now we are human and we have these things going on in our life and we, we have these but listen we are to repent we are to repent of those things and we are to be different. We are to walk in the Spirit of God, not in the lust of the flesh, not in the flesh. Paul told Timothy to flee the lust of the flesh because those things will tear you down. You're not going to do anything in God if you are walking in the flesh. You will not do anything for God. You might think you are. You know, how many times do, how many times do we think we're doing something for God, but then... In our heart and in our mind and in our spirit, we're doing it begrudgingly. How many times in our life does that happen? And what did Jesus say? Standing before Jesus at the, at the, at the, at the gate or whatever. And he sends them to hell. But Lord, didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we do that in your name? Didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we do that? And he says to them... Depart from me, I never knew you. That is exactly what I'm talking about here. We can think that we're doing something for God, but if we harbor this stuff in our heart without repentance, we will not be with God in the end. Plain and simple as the nose on my face. It's right there. See that? Plain as the nose on my face. If we harbor these things in our heart, we will not be with God in the end. We won't. We will not. And I will tell you something. Everybody, every other pastor will tell you things like, well, God understands. God knows when you have strife. And God knows when, God understands. God does understand, but God also calls us to repent. To repent of things. We cannot fulfill the lust of the flesh and expect God to minister to us through the Spirit because He will not. He will not. I'm not trying to be harsh here, but I'm being honest. If you have these things in your heart, if you are harboring these things in your heart and you were to die tonight without repentance, you would not be with God. You would not be with God. And, you know, some people say, well, you know, it's it's a... It's a big, you know, what you've done with your life in the past and how much you've built up. Now, that's a works-based system. 
That is a workspace system. We are to be with God walking in the Spirit. Yes, we're going to have problems. We're going to have issues. We're going to have things. We're going to have these kinds of things in our life. But if we do not recognize it and repent of it, when it's brought to our attention through a Bible study or through God's Word or through God's Spirit, if we do not repent of it, we will not see God. We won't. And I'm not going to sit here and say, well, God understands because, you know, God knows this person was a jerk to you and so it's okay to... No. We are to repent of those feelings and God, God knows and God understands that those feelings are there because we're human. You know, I'm not discounting those feelings. I'm not saying those feelings... You shouldn't have those feelings because we do have those feelings. Those feelings, we do have them. But when we do have them, we are to recognize that we have them and we are to not dwell on them and we're to ask God to forgive us for that and help us to be better and move on walking in the Spirit. That's what Hannah did. That's what Hannah did. Be like Hannah. Be like Hannah. All right. Enough of that. Now, he goes on, verse 22 and 23. The passage in Scripture that everybody in Galatians quotes, discounting the fact that this book is a rebuke, but they quote this, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, mercy, meekness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. People will quote that scripture and say, well, that's, that's what God says in the book of Galatians. That's a great thing. He's pointing this thing out because they're doing the above ones. See, he's not encouraging them and saying, this is, this, you're doing right. You're doing, he's saying to them, you're doing the things that are in the top paragraphs. And this is what you should be doing in, the, in this paragraph. He's warning them. He's telling them. He's, he's, he's giving them an opportunity to realize they're sinning and they, can, they need to change. And I'm telling you today, if you are sinning against God in anything that is in these above things and you do not repent of them and you realize that you need to be walking in the Spirit, you will not see God. You won't. You won't. And that's hard to say. That's hard to say, because you know what? I, I'm, I'm human, just like everybody else. And I am surprised that there are still people watching this after I've said things like that. But I'm human, just like everybody else. I get, I get my feelings hurt. I get angry. I, I get, you know, I've told on myself so many times, but I'm a slammer. I, you know, I get angry and I slam things. Okay? Uh, that's... That's me, and I have to repent of those things, and I have to I have to put those continually under the blood of Christ in order to get victory over those things. That is what God would want us to do, not not dwell on the things and say, "Yep, I did that because I was mad enough and I was right for doing it," and I don't have to say I'm sorry for anything. I don't have to repent for anything. I was in the right. Uh, no, if you are doing anything like this these top things, then you need to repent of them and move on in God. Because that's what God would want. That's what God desires for you. A better relationship, a more fervent relationship, a relationship that is one that is walking in the Spirit of God, not in the flesh. Don't walk in the flesh. Yeah, we're going to be tempted by the flesh, Sure, sure, you know, you know, uh, sure. It's, it, it's in any, in, in every manner of man, we are, we are tempted, or woman, we are tempted. Jesus understands that. That's why Jesus was a live, real person, fully man and fully God. So he understands the things in which we go through. That's why he's our advocate with the Father, the Bible says, is because of the fact that he knows the temptation. He knows those things, and yet he has victory over them. And he calls us to have victory over the same things. You see? 
And how are we going to get victory over the same things that Jesus says victory over is by walking in the Spirit of God. Right? Getting in, getting in the Bible. You know, I say this all the time, and I'm going to continue saying it until God takes me home. We need to be in our Bibles more than we are right now. And I don't, I don't care. You might, be, you might study two, three hours a day. I might study two, three hours a day. It's never enough. It's never enough. We need to be in our Bibles. We need to be fully open to God's moving in our life. We need to, we need to put ourselves in a good church, a Bible-believing church, a Bible-preaching church, a church that preaches the whole gospel, and we need to put ourselves in contact with other believers to encourage us to be what we what we need to be, right? God desires us for that. That's how we're going to win victory over anything, right? That's how. That's the only way we're going to win victory over anything is by putting ourselves back in God. And doing the things that God wants us to do. Well, that is, that was chapter 5, verses 16 through 25. But then he goes on, well, I didn't quite finish it up. Those who are Christ's, it says in verse 24 have crucified the flesh with its passions and lusts. Those are in Christ. Now understand, we have, we have um, this temptation all the time. But we need to put it under the blood of Christ. Verse 25, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit. Living in the Spirit. Living in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, being fully, fully, uh, um, walking with God, fully understanding what God is wanting from us to do, fully understanding that. Okay, we need to be that way. He goes. He's saying here, not only he's saying, um, he says those. Um, if we live in the Spirit, we must walk in the Spirit. Living it and walking it are two different things. Okay? Living it and walking it are two different things. We can say, I'm a Christian. And we can um, say, I believe. And say, I'm a Christian. And say that I go to church. And, say, and you can even go to church. You can go through the motions. Okay? But... Living it and walking it are two different things. Walking it says, I'm going to put my put feet my feet to my faith. If God tells me to do this, I'm going to, I'm going to walk it out in my in my in my life. I'm going to walk it out. I'm going to I'm going to figure it out. It's not a real like walk for those that may might not understand. It's not a, it's not a, you're not going to go walking down the road. But you're putting your feet to your faith. If you if you understand and know what God wants you to do, but then you don't do anything with it. That's not walking in the Spirit. That's not walking in the Spirit at all. You're living somewhat in the Spirit, but you're not fully living in the Spirit because you're not walking in the Spirit. Living in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit, uh, although they're two different things, they go hand in hand because we're to live in the Spirit and also walk in the Spirit. So it's like it's like this, okay? Every week I preach about something. And every week we, 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 we talk about the book of Galatians. And I usually give some sort of pointed things. Now if you take that and you say, well that was good. I need to, I need to, I need to, I, I recognize that in my life. I recognize that as, as a problem or as something that needs to be worked on. But then you never do anything with it. You don't apply it. You don't try to change. You don't try to try to figure out a way to make it better or different or or uh, more fervent in a relationship or whatever the case. If you don't apply that which you're taught, 
That's what walking in it means. You're living it. You're listening. You're 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 listening. Your your uh, your ears are open, but your heart's closed. Okay, your ears are open, but your heart's closed because you are not applying the things that God would want you to apply. Understand? That's the difference between that's that's the difference between walking and living. And they go hand in hand. If, you, if you're going to listen to God and you're going to do and you're going to sit and you're going to hear God, that's living it. And part and the second part of living it is the application, the walking in the Spirit. Okay, we're to walk in the Spirit and not walk and not just live it. Live it. Walk the walk and talk the talk. That's exactly what I'm saying. But a greater thing is you walk the talk and you talk the walk. Okay, you talk the walk and you walk the talk. So, in other words, what that says is, you are to mean what you say and say what you mean. If you are a believer, your actions better um, back it up. If you're not, then your actions uh, mean nothing. Your words mean nothing. Okay. So. He goes on, 26, let us not be conceited, provoking one another and, and envying one another. You see, we are to, in other words, not be conceited. And this, and this, this, this um, smacks in the middle, smacks in the face, the mentality. And, and, and this is something that irks me really badly is when people in, in churches, um, different churches, not, not maybe, not anything I'm saying locally, just, just in general, people in churches that believe that their church is the best place to be. If you want to be, if, if you want God to touch your life, come to our church. If you want God to minister to you, come to our church. That's, that's, that's conceit right there. Yeah, God can touch you in the church. And God will touch you in the church. But being conceited in the idea that God only touches people in our church, no other place, that's conceit. And we're to stay away from that as believers. You know, we're to rejoice with those who rejoice in any, in any form. You know, somebody might say, well, you know, I went to church over here, but then God called me out. And God's moving over here. Are we to be angry with this person because God called them out and put them over here? No, that's conceit. We are to be rejoicing with them that God is using them in a different situation or a different church or a different ministry, right? That's what we're supposed to be doing. See, it, it seems, to me, it seems so simple. It's like, it's so simple. So simple. But when we when we think about that, when we think about uh, the things we do and the things we say, it comes across can come across as conceit. <laughs> sure, yes, come to ours. I would love for everyone that watches this to come to our church just once in a while. Maybe you know have a we we used to do this in the assemblies of God. We'd have radio listeners Sunday. We we would provoke. We would not provoke. We would promote. This particular Sunday, it was called Radio Listener Sunday, and we would we would promote it, and we would say, if you're a listener and you want you, we just come and visit. We're not asking you to join. Just come and visit. We want to see you know, you know, we want to see your face. We want you to be out there with us. Uh, and we used to do that, and and uh, so we'd we'd get a good group every year. Um, but you know. We need to we need to look the whole the whole thing of this whole deal, okay? This whole deal is walking in this walking in the spirit and living in the spirit and and knowing what it is to live and walk in the spirit and 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 applying those things and doing that which uh, we need to do and I and you know and that's basically what we need to be doing. It's it's not about uh, it's not about saying we're better, saying we're more um, whatever. It's not about that at all. Um, but it is about 
the idea that we are to walk with God and be able to do that which God has called us to do. Denise, if I could send you a plane ticket, I would send you a plane ticket. I would. I would. Because I know you'd come to our church. And I'd even rent you and David a place to live. Because <laughs> I know you guys would be there every Sunday. I know. But, um, anyway. Um, God is God is good. And, and and what what is the takeaway from all of this really is that that Paul is telling the Galatians and Paul is telling us through his word through his word that um, we are to walk in the spirit we're to we're to we're to we're to put aside all of the things that would cause us to um, would cause us to uh, trying to think here to fall away from God okay would fall away from God we need to we need to um, put the brakes on the things that would cause us to pull away from God and lean heavier he, heavier upon God and and so many times, do we do we lean heavily heavy on ourselves, right? Uh, in in circumstances, how many times do we lean heavily upon our on our own understanding? What's the Bible say? Lean not on your own understanding. Tr trust in the Lord, right? Because our own understanding is flawed. God is not flawed. Our own understanding is flawed. So this whole thing is walk in the Spirit. Walk in the the um, spirit of God and not in the flesh, right? That's the whole thing. That's the takeaway. Walk in the spirit. Do whatever you know you need to do. Read the word. Get into a good church. I, you know, I, some of you are are in our church. You know, um, Shar's in our church. Um, Denise is a um, what do you what, what do we want to call Denise? Um, a a internet congregant okay um sapphire you've been our church to our church a couple of times we'd love to see you again i know up in piatone it's it's hard to hard to get down there it's a far it's a, that's a pretty good pretty good clip um it'd be a bit, it'd be a farther clip for denise to drive from from uh georgia <laughs> it's a church every sunday but uh you know but we, you know, that we are to walk in the flesh, in the spirit, not in the flesh, right? So let's let's our in our in our in our, in our takeaway. Let's try to do do a couple things. Number one, let's try to be more like Hannah. Okay. Read read the the first couple chapters of First Samuel. Read read uh, that. Okay. And number two, strive, strive, strive to um, <coughs> strive to walk in the ways of God. Strive to do that. However, you have to do that. Strive to do that. Okay. Um, do that. Strive. To, you know, read the word. Get into a good church. Um, Get into people, get get friends with people that can hold you accountable to a good relationship with God. Um, walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. Find ways to do that. That's that's what Paul's doing here. You know they, you know like I said before they they uh, quote the twenty second and twenty third verse, and they're like, oh, this is an encouragement, but it it's a rebuke. Um, it's a rebuke from. Paul to the church of Galatia. You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. This is what you're supposed to be doing. So, it, so it's a challenge for us to do that which we're supposed to be doing and not to do the things we're used to doing. Okay? It's always contrary to the human nature to do the things of God. Because we know and we don't... We, 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 we know what it's like to live in the, in, the, in the lust of the flesh. We understand that. We know that. 
but to live in the spirit if you're not accustomed to it it is contrary to the human okay and we know that we we see that in people's reactions to us when we say well, we got three 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 times to go to church you know? <coughs> <clears throat> they're like, why are you go to church three times? I can understand Sunday, but why Wednesday? Why, you know, why uh, twice on Sundays and once on Wednesday? Why, why would you do that? See, the human nature, that's contrary. Doing things in God is contrary to the human nature. And so we have to strive against human nature to, to do that which the Spirit would call us to do. <coughs> Man. I tickle in my throat. I didn't have my pop with me tonight, see? But does that make sense? I mean, you know, I there's there's so much that we covered tonight. And it's 8.30 already. <laughs> but there's so much we covered tonight. And I hope you get something out of this because this particular passage is so important to the Christian walk. It's so important to, to the Christian, Okay? That we get this nailed down, and I and I used to I used to do this um, with the youth in the other church that I used to that we used to attend before we were going to Claytonville. <clears throat> I taught the the um, I taught the fifth, sixth, and seventh graders, or no, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, and this is what I would teach them to start off with. <clears throat> and I would go back to it periodically, and I would tell them, this you have to nail down now in order to have a good life in Christ, sort of a good relationship with God. You've got to nail this stuff down right now at your young age in order to have a good life in Christ. I said, don't be like me, 23 years old, and trying to figure this stuff out. Do it now, because I'm telling you this is what you have to do. Figure it out now. You know. So that's what I'm saying to you tonight. If you're not doing this, figure it out now. Get it figured out. Because if we don't, if we don't, we're not going to see God. You know, and, and I'm just as, um, not immune, I'm not immune. I am just as uh, um, in danger of this as you are. Because I'm human. And so then we must figure out how we are to live in the Spirit and not in the flesh. So we got to get it nailed down now. We do. we got to get it nailed down now. we gotta, we got to work on it. So that's the challenges, right? Work on it. Be more like Hannah. Find a way to be closer to God. However, whatever works for you time-wise in your day, try to find a way to get closer to God. Okay? Try and try to get into a good Bible believing, Bible preaching, whole gospel preaching church, and uh, do that. And listen, another thing I'm going to say to you before we close, okay? Don't rely on me to be your complete and utter inoculation for the week, okay? And what I mean by that is. Don't open your Bible on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights only. Open your Bible every single day. Every single day. Yes, I'm an instrument of God to bring the Word to you, and I, and I, I try to do that to the best of my ability, but allow God to speak to you through His Word throughout the week to complement what you have learned on Sunday. Okay? So, I'm done rattling. I'm done rattling. It is quarter till or ten, 20 to 9, my time. 20 to 10, Denise's time. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. I hope this uh, ministered to you tonight. I hope that you uh, get something out of it and apply it to your life. You Really. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for those that joined. Lord, I just pray that you'd bless each and every one of them and touch them and help them to grow in you. Help them to be more like Hannah and help them to be uh, more uh, open to your word. Lord, bless them by your spirit. Give them strength in body and mind and spirit. And Lord, touch them right now in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Thank you so much for being here tonight. God bless you. Have a good week. Um, God is good. Remember that. I'm tired. You can probably tell. <laughs> I'm getting tired. Um, it's been a long week. So, God bless you. And we'll see you next week. Have a good day, have a good night, and a good week. I'm going to go relax. We'll talk to you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.